Well, we have so many exciting things going on today. I got a new apron from mm -hmm. Brett and Brianna that, you know, that we have not worn since Christmas. Right. Okay. But even more so, you got... Re really exciting news in the family is we got this apron like four almost years three ago. years ago. Three almost years, five years ago. That long in ago? In Italy. Almost. Anyway, yeah. it's Cucina del Nono, which means kitchen of the grandpa. And it's finally come to fruition. I am a grandpa. And Ruth is a grandma. And I'm a grandma. So <laughs> we, we have, have the little, most beautiful baby. Yeah, the most beautiful baby ever. I think it was ever born. Eleanor Rose. And down the road, she'll be nicknamed, or we'll go by Nora, Nora. Rose. Nora Rose. But she is so beautiful. We got to spend her first three, three days, days of her life. Uh, she was born right. on March 10th, and mm -hmm. she just got out of the hospital this past week. Yeah. And what's really exciting is I get to go down next week and spend a whole week with her helping to take care of her. So I am going to just rock and rock and rock You're do all day long. Get some good rocking time in. So before it's that, excellent. but we need to do a cooking show. We've got some so, catering jobs to do. Yeah. So we've got a busy weekend we've coming up. We've got a busy up, weekend so. and next week coming up. <clears> so let's get so started on this. So in preparation for um, Eleanor's birth, we started making biscotti. Right. And we had such a good time making the biscotti, we thought we'd Let's make the biscotti the and do it on the shelf. Absolutely. Okay? So, so yeah. this recipe is very similar to what my friend Steve Kaiser, who used to work at the UW, mm -hmm. when I used to work at the UW, and right. he would make biscotti for the Food for Thought fundraiser. And he kept telling me how easy how it easy is. How easy it is to make. So, so, and you didn't believe him, but now it really is easy to make. It as is. we found out last week. Yes. So let's so, try this. So you actually start with a, a cake mix. So we're going to do a chocolate biscotti. And you start out with a chocolate cake mix. And if you wanted to do like a lemon, there's a, mm -hmm. a lemon recipe that we've done. And you can put a, a, either a plate or a lemon cake mix in there. Okay. And then we're going to eggs. add two eggs. They go in right now. You don't now. have to beat them up. Just nope, everything's going to go in. One cup of flour. One teaspoon of almond extract. One teaspoon of vanilla. Five tablespoons of chocolate, chocolate syrup. syrup. And then a stick, one stick of melted butter. And that goes in now. And that's going to go in now. Yep. So you can okay. use that if you would like. And then we're just going to mix that all up. I'll let you wipe the table off there. Mm -hmm. We're going to mix that up on low just until it's all mixed in. Let's get this out of the way. So be careful that your flour and, and cake mix flying don't go flying, exactly. And to this recipe, we will add uh, half a cup of mini chocolate chips and three quarters of a cup of slivered, slivered almonds. And, and you mix those in by hand? Yes. After this is all done? Yes. Yeah. So the dough is going to be, you know, a little Fast. bit, little bit tough. But so it's just, kind of sticky. Just barely mix it. Right. Um, can get that all scraped off. Okay. See, I typically just use my fingers to get this okay, chocolate off, that over which there. works pretty easily. And that goes in, and you just hand stir yeah, this in, right? Yeah, just hand stir. A little stuff going on here. This is really. Yeah, I mean, it seems it? like it's almost you know stiffer almost than it was dry. before, but but it's the way it's meant to be. That's the recipe exactly. Well, it's interesting because you use a cake mix, right. and a, typically a cake mix you use water and oil, right? And eggs. Yes. But here we don't use any water. No, nope, no oil. water, no oil, just the butter. So the okay, butter. but you don't want to mix it too much. Too and much. Get it. Nope. Okay. And then we're and then, spread it out into yeah, and then it's like making like a log, like a log almost, just mm -hmm. this this long piece. Kind of use your fingers and, and so just kind of use a knife, but don't work it too much. Don't work it too no. much. Is this, no, do you think you this just, is half? Each, is that pretty equal? Um, you might have a little bit more there. I'm that's not sure. Look, that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna so you want to just kind of spread it out without working too much. So you're saying, and then it, and if I remember doing this last week, about 20 inches long? Yeah, so it's going to be almost the length of, a cookie of sheet. your cookie sheet. 
Okay, like so. Because it's not that pretty looking, actually. You know, when when you do it, you just kind of keep it looking kind of rough. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to talk to Steve sometime and see how how he did. Okay. You know his, but but anyway, but Julie, you know, would make hers, you know, totally from scratch. Okay. And um, oh, but the nice thing is that. You know, it'll last for weeks or even months, you know, and you don't have to, you don't put it in the freezer. Don't you, freeze, but you don't it? freeze it. You don't, don't refrigerate, refrigerate it. it. No, those are all the things I thought that you do. Yeah. In fact, that's the first thing I did was I put some in the refrigerator. It's and then like, I started no, reading about read it. You don't put it in the refrigerator. You, you put it in a, like a cookie jar. Like a cookie jar or a, a tin. Okay. So that it's sealed. But, but yet if you put it. It doesn't have to be Tupperware tight sealed. No, because if you put it in Tupperware, then that would soften it. Yeah. You know, most likely. Right. So this is the first step. Enough? Okay. So, so this step is good one, enough. So this is step it, one. Lay it out. Okay. Then we bake so it So I've got it bacon at three. 150 degrees okay. for about 30 to 32 minutes until okay. you touch it and it, it's just kind of real set, not soft. Okay. Yeah. So they, they need to just cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Or I let them cool down for five minutes or so, maybe. And then you're going to remove them from the cookie sheet because then eventually you're going to cut them. But gently, you don't go down you, hard you kind of and just kind of start and really kind of saw it when you're doing it, okay? And about that wide. Yeah, and then just start to saw it. So about, it could be a half to three fourths. Okay, okay, we'll do about that. Yeah, the sawing does work pretty well. It does. And yeah. I think these are just the right. And then the next step is you're going to turn them on their side. So we're just going to put that one that way. And then, and then they're going to set them to up on their sides so they bake can bake and, and dry out a little more. I think ready? they're ready to ready? come out of the oven. Okay. okay. It is kind of a long process. So if you can do some extra things in between, you know, the time that you have to let them set up and cut and everything, that works too. Like look at baby pictures, things like that. I know, yeah. Yeah. As long as a little dark. So how many minutes were they in? 10? 10. So they can be in 10 to 15. I have melted my white chocolate chips, as I said, with about a teaspoon of shortening. And I'm just going to pour them in here. And okay. it is just so easy Butterfly. just to do a little drizzle. Just drizzle like so. And if you prefer to uh, dip them, just put a bunch of melted chocolate in a, a dish that's a little bit deep and then just dip i dip just one end in about you know a third of the way up not not half but or if you want more chocolate these are also good with just dark chocolate or mm -hmm. melted just you know when when they're all done the the uh the melted chocolate holds really well and then just put them in uh, like I said, a, a pottery a cookie, cookie jar, jar of some sort. a tin can, whatever don't, you want. Don't put them in the refrigerator. And don't, don't put freeze. them in anything too tightly sealed. And like don't freeze and, and don't, don't do freeze. Tupperware. So I Got think it. that's about it. So we are going to finish up a couple of days. And then I'm heading back down to Madison to hold my granddaughter, do Eleanor Rose. Do and I can't rocking. wait to see Eleanor again. So uh, we are really going to enjoy having this little granddaughter. I just know we are. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> we already have. We are. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Ruth and Gary. Thank you. And Grandpa. And Gary. Thank you. <laughs> so until next time, happy cooking. It's about time we have Brianna in outtakes. It's been a long, long time. I'm usually in there with Ruthie. Yeah. Come on in. We got a little outtake going on here. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. She's trying to figure it out herself. Hey, she's I trying to figure it out. She's trying to figure out the <laughs> sound system here. I figured it out. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Gary, hurry up! I said, don't work it too much. What do you do? You start just smooth, smooth in the back and forth. Oh, yeah. I stopped as soon as you said stop. Oh. Or,
Oh no, I kept taking my hands and patting it down. No. She never listens to me. When I say don't work it too much, that's what I mean. You start don't. You keep spreading it off. Oh my gosh. How am I ever going to take over this business when you retire if you don't give me some autonomy? Not like that. No. Second in command person does the frosting. No, I was going to do a more efficient I way because you were going like this and then coming back and going this like this and coming back. I was going to say, you just go from one end to the other and you zigzag. And, uh -huh. that's, and that's what you get when you zigzag <laughs> back and forth. Why don't you stick with your process? That works a lot I better. I think I'm going to.